Welcome to the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 17th of March, 2021. Uh, let's talk topics. Uh, so Damien, I had assumed you might want to talk further about multiple pipelines defined for multi-branch. Are there other topics you want to add or Tim, are there any, and Tim, I was gonna ask you about if you wanted to review uh, what you see as what's next for um, UX improvements and sort of uh, UX changes, because I saw that you've got a, a pull request in now for to make some further tables to divs changes. Uh, would that be an okay topic or would you rather let it wait for another time? Um, yeah, I can briefly talk about it. It's quite a minor one. Okay. So maybe what I should say is pending UX changes and that way it's not, it's not putting more drama on it than it should be. Yeah. Damien, anything else from you? No, nothing new. Okay, great. Well, so Tim, how about we'll go right to you then on, I'm gonna turn on mute my mic and let you talk to UX changes. I'll take Yeah. So, um, so there's basically a PR open to make some changes to the run summary page and the job or project page um, to convert them from using tables for layout to divs. It's very conceptually different to the other one where the previous one, previous tables to divs um, was known as tables to divs, but it was really form tables to divs. Um, and so this one is changing basically two more pages um, from tables to divs. And, and they're pages that are often contributed to from plugins, um, usually using the very the exact same sort of widgets. Um, the run summary page has normally got a little icon on the left and then maybe a little bit of text and then occasionally a list or a little bit of extra information underneath it. Um, whereas the job page is mostly trend graphs um, and like pipeline stage, pipeline stage view or whatever it's called goes there. Um, and the odd other information, but not it's not too busy in general. Um, again, it uses sim similar ish to the run page, but slightly different. Um, so there was, an, there was a so the main change really is that uh, the P summary tag, which is the which is in the Hudson folder, um, it removes the um, TD elements and moves it to using and just completely removes them. The issue with that is that layout was being done by different TDs um, and they were keeping them on the same line. Um, for some reason, some, some plugins, I think, it's kind of what's known as divitis, where people just stick divs everywhere, um, not really knowing what they're doing. Um, but what that seems to be happening is a div is a, is a block element in um, in layout, and so we've removed those table wrappers, and so you've got an image which so piece summary is basically a icon and a block block of whatever you want, and it's usually icon and then a bit of text. So what a couple of plugins did was they did icon and then they wrapped their text in a div and it's a block element. So it moved it down to the next line. Um, so in the few plugins that that's been done and that's been removed, it was, most, it was warnings in G mostly. Um, so that basically the plugin needs to be using an inline element like span or nothing. Um, if they want their text to be on the same line. Okay, an inline element. Okay, so so the, what you're doing is giving me an education in in HTML and and layout. So so instead of div, if I wanted it on the same line, I should be using a span tag. Or, or nothing. It, okay. You don't, you don't. You don't have to have anything. So you uh, use span if you want to add some more markup, like an ID or a CSS class. If you want to style it in some way. Okay. So if if additional markup is needed, got it. All right. Okay. 
So any any idea how how to assess or have you already assessed the I've, the I've ran with every plugin that's ran on ci.jekus.ir running all the actions we run there. Um, and it's all it all renders fine. I yeah, from my initial testing, it's all fine. And it's not gonna break anything. It's so form tables to devs could break forms. This right. may have minor visual issues on um, on some less common plugins. Yeah, so these will be you said these will be visual, not whereas with with the earlier round, I could lose the ability to submit the form. This one, there isn't a form really associated with it. So layout misplacement not form submission failure yeah and so this actually this this does fix one plugin um that was broken without this change um so they had used a table they they used a table in their um action that they were attaching to the page and the table was nested under a table and it was done in such a way that the browser decided to fix the layout and um, what ended up happening was that anything after that, um, anything after that action was shoved out to the other side of the page and the layout was broken. Um, I don't think that that pattern was used very widely, um, but it was used in the source on demand plugin and did, and if you were using it, um, it did break the page for you. What they were doing and the results looked reasonable. So I figured it was probably better to fix Jenkins than it was to hack around it in the plugin. I see. Okay. Great. And I got onto this because. I viewed a page on our work Jenkins with Source Labs and it looked horrible. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's that's healthy self-interest, right? Guided self-interest. Look, this 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 bugs me, therefore I'm gonna work it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Are there things that others need to do? Should should let's see, should, I guess let me look up that PR because we may want to encourage others to to go look at the at yeah, the just uh, if anyone can run that PR on their setup and see if anything looks funny. Yeah, you know, so you've, got a, was, you've got a home setup. Um, let's see, I should uh, see it. Put, 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 my na put my name in, in the author, there it is, yeah. There, okay. All right, good. So that's the one and, and checking it with, with my environment is a, is a good thing to check to see, hey, for the plugins I use, it's a different, slightly different set than ci.jenkins.io. Great. Okay. And help me be sure that I understand. So I'm going to bring up bring up my Jenkins and help me be sure that that I'm understanding. When you say the job page, for instance, it's something like uh, this. Yes, that's that this page. page here. So you probably won't see anything as you've got very little on there. Got it. Okay, great. But if you go into the run page, and the run page is is one of these pages, for yeah, instance, that one. Okay. and you've, you've you've got again very little on there, but um, you can check it anyway. Yeah, well, and and certainly I've got other examples where I've got a lot more, just to be sure that I understand. So things like this one, where it's the page is is yeah. quite quite filled with things that are actually important to me. And this one, likewise, where, oh, there's all sorts of data in here that I don't want to lose or be broken. Okay, thanks, Tim. Yeah, that Jacoco one's an example of one that might break. I fixed ah. the, so the test, so the, I'm assuming that's the legacy Jacoco plugin in some way? I think so. Yeah, I haven't, because this is a freestyle project, this particular one is intentionally testing some legacy stuff. So that I think is the, the old one. Because I, I have fixed the new plugin. Oh, good. Okay. The new plugin is fixed, so I had a minor issue. Yeah, I've been using this one to help me navigate code coverage. I still haven't learned how to 
how to get this view back for myself with the new, and it's just a matter of me learning. Yeah, the new one it took me a little bit to figure it out. I think it's a little bit non obvious. Okay. Uh, things that you can click and yeah. All right. Anything else on pending UX changes, Tim? Um, I need to get around to releasing the pipeline graph view model. Um, I've I did I did do some more work on it. Did I release it? I might have released it. I'm not sure. I don't think I've seen a release yet. But okay, that's the one that you had demonstrated. You had demonstrated at the contributor summit, right? This one right here, the pipeline visualization. Yeah, let, me, let me release it now. I have it on this laptop. And it's alpha level where exploring, hey, is that, that what your sort of sense is where it's at right now? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I would say, yeah, alpha, beta, um, experimental. So that's releasing at the moment. Um, Great. So I think I managed to reproduce the graph in a lot more other states um, than before. Um, well, I haven't found any difference basically now in what's currently there. It's very hacky, very, very gross. Um, the code is, I don't know if anyone has looked at the code, <laughs> it is insane um, and fragile. Um, but it all works. So the next bit to really, oh, I should, so the next bit is, I created a couple of issues as we're not, when I was finishing this off. Um, we need to implement some form of polling or pushing up updates, probably polling to start with. Um, as currently you have to refresh the page to get updates. Um, and then it's things like log viewer and um, better and the like a job view um, and figuring out whether we want to move it to the main page or leave it on its own page for now. Mostly, yeah, looking, so. for, mostly looking for contributors. It should be very easy. Well, a lot of it should be straightforward um, to do. And yeah, happy to, and if it, especially, especially front end, anyone interested in the front end side of it, it should be. Um, yeah, quite straightforward. The, the back end, happy to help with. I mean, I'm happy to do the other side. I just don't have a lot of time. Um, well, but if someone so, gets... so, yeah. so you mentioned you mentioned front end, and there are a number of times when I sort of have to flinch away from getting people who volunteer for front end on Jenkins because many things are terribly complicated. This is a place where a a typical front end developer might fit well and say, "Oh yeah, hey, here's where you make your changes." I mean, or is this, or is there still, this is going to have a very steep learning curve for a front end developer trying to help? It's just plain React. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't get them too involved. And in, as, long, as long as they've got a somewhat reasonable data model, um, assuming a REST API data model, um, then it's fine. Um, I wouldn't get a front end developer involved in the in the back end of it so much as it's the stuff's quite complex. Um, but the front end is, is just fairly modern React, fairly. Um, the well, the new, they can write the new stuff in modern. It's on a slightly old version, um, and it's, it's using um, component is using class components rather than function components. Um, which could be rewritten, but it's that but it's just extracted from Blue Ocean. And, but yeah, it's, it's it's just a React app at that point, really, and should be quite straightforward to add more React components. Cool, it's released now. Excellent. Okay, so released. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Tim? What version did I release it as 0.1? Oh, good. Damien, multiple pipelines for a multi-branch job. 
So um, the, the the next step that I did not work on since uh, our past meeting is to bring that topic to the pipeline you SIGU uh, in order to see what have, uh, if there have been any thoughts, any tries, any prototypes uh, about this. I'm sure there we can we're gonna discover discussion about the pro and cons of this solution. Um, so the goal is to uh, start uh, by uh, learning, watching, and listening. On why why is it not uh, a thing? There there might be a lot of reasons, and also bring the the ideas and the use case to see if it differs from what uh, we had in the past. The main point here is look at how easy it is to do with a tool like GitHub CI. Maybe this is this is why we should start working on that while it was not the case before, but now that's a strong contender that brings a, that allows a lot of new usages. And uh, you have already written the one uh, I listed past, past week. And I can totally share a declarative pipeline uh, that uh, I've built for the infra, the one for the Jenkins infra slash AWS, which should map to four use cases different use cases that use the same code, the same make file, the same Terraform project, but with different results that are triggered by different events. So writing a single Jenkins file is painful. Um, and writing scripted pipeline is absolutely out of question. It's, it's not an option. I'm, I won't write scripted pipeline if I don't have to. Because uh, depending on the people you have in front of you, some people are more at ease with a scripted, uh, let's say more scripted view, some are at ease with a DSL. But in the end, most of the other CI tools are not even thinking about whatever complexity. They delegate that to a real tools that can be tested. And here, my goal is to say there are a lot of use cases that I see today. So I want to ask the other, how will you use solve that problem and if the answer is use scripted pipeline or then yeah then. but i think we can have a middle ground there uh, because they they might have some mechanism that could be used the goal is not to have a, a fancy ideas it, it's more how could we change the existing to fit the model of i have different jenkins file i have a jenkins file the d directory with a bunch of jenkins files each one should map to a pipeline is it possible to have such a feature where the multi-branch job will create all the all the required uh, pipelines jobs. I don't have no more. I don't know if it's clear. If it makes sense for you, it it did. That's uh, I. I'm glad to hear that you were able to approximate it with declarative, and I understand how painful that must have been in terms of expressing what is basically four pipelines as a single pipeline much cleaner to just express them as four independent things. Yeah, got it. Maybe using the user persona could help here. Totally, you can, uh, today you can totally have these four, these multiple pipelines on the same repository. Mm -hmm. If you have access, if you have the possibility as a developer or as a pipeline writer, if you are able to change the job DSL configuration used on the Jenkins instance, either the C jobs, or the Jenkins cask. If you manage and use Jenkins, that's okay. That's not an issue because in both cases, it will be code in a repo. However, most of the time, the people using Jenkins are not the people administrating Jenkins. And the time between, okay, I want to add these new pipelines on my repo, I push the branch. And then the time where these pipeline are there and you are currently working on that. The feedback loop today, it's, not acceptable to speak more than five minutes between both. Right. Yeah. So if in five minutes I can contact the admin team, make the change, have the change reviewed, approved, deliver, deployed, Jenkins restarted with the change applied and job DSL without any job DSL syntax error. In that case, I'm fine with that. However, that's not the case. No, I, just, uh, I, just want, I just want to push a Jenkins file and have it picked up. Right. Why yeah. is that? Why is I don't have a webhook? So here, here, here's the point. Um, uh, I want to, to, 
to push to the pipeline. I don't know when will when is the next plan uh, SIG pipeline uh, planned. I'm not sure. And, and you may just need to ask them on an email list or in a Gitter channel. It's on the Jenkins calendar. Uh, I don't know yeah. how active they are right now. I'm not sure that they've been having regular meetings. So it may be simplest just to send them an email saying, hey, or post in Gitter, hey, here's this idea that's rolling mm -hmm. around in the UX SIG. Um, any, any guidance on it. And it may be worth a, a conversation with Steven Tarana of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the SIG, just a one-on-one -on -one conversation. He's based in US East Coast and has done a bunch of, a lot of shepherding of pipeline templating concepts and how do you get there? Okay. Is it the pipeline authoring SIG or is it another thing? That's that's the name of it is the pipeline authoring SIG. Yeah, okay. let, me, let me just, I've got a, uh, let's see. Pipeline. I have the event calendar. The next one will be next Friday. Um, it will be at uh, 5 p.m. for my time. So that should be, uh, that should be noon for the East Coast. Uh, so a bit early in the morning for the West Coast. Yeah, and you may not just send drop them drop mm -hmm. a message into their Gitter channel. I put it there in the in the yep. in the document here. Just to let them know before the meeting <laughs> to avoid right. surprises. Good tip. That's all for me. All right. Anything else we need to discuss before we close? All right. Thanks, everybody. Meet again in two weeks.